Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. Get ready to hear the truth about America on a show that's not immune to the facts with your host, Dan Bongino. All right, welcome to the Dan Bongino Show. Producer Joe, how are you? Uh, Producer Joe, how are you on this yeah. fine Friday? It's Whoa. Whoa. Friday! All right, we yeah. got in his best Wink Martindale <laughs> voice. Remember Wink? Wink yeah, Martindale. baby! Hey, a couple of quick We're administrative doing it with notes. You, Dano. You're the best. Sure, man. baby. Thank you to Mike for the referee hat. Very funny. I we could I couldn't figure out the name of it. And thank you to I think it's Dave for the cricket. I asked for a cricket <laughs> sound. It's a fake cricket. It does make a sound. You'll hear it. So thank you to Dave. You'll probably hear that now throughout the show because every time you move the darn cricket, it makes that noise. But I have the best listeners and viewers in the world. You all are great. I, like I mean that. You mean the world. Yeah, I got it in the mail yesterday. I'm like, is there a cricket in there? Thankfully, it was a fake one. Uh, one more note. I, again, with the greatest of respect, ask you to please watch Hannity tonight on Fox at 9 p.m. Eastern. I will be guest hosting uh, after the show. I'll be taking a trip up. I would really appreciate it. You make us number one every time. Please DVR it if you can't Make it, watch it as soon as you can. Means a lot to me. Hannity tonight, Fox, Joe, you watch it too. Uh, please. Uh, okay, um, Dano. And I've got some big news coming next week as well. All right. Um, let's get to it. Today's show brought to you by buddies at GenuCell. This is the choice of the beautiful women in my house. The stunners. We use GenuCell in this house. Do you wish that double chin would just disappear? Newsflash, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. People look at your jawline. It simply tells your age. Here is the famous Robin. From Lubbock, Texas. I put GenuCell jawline cream on my neck two or three days ago, Joe. It's the best my neck has looked in 20 years. People told me my face looks young. I'm blown away. We need to get Robin as a guest on the show. Using MDL technology and Chamonix's proprietary base, GenuCell's brand new jawline treatment specifically targets the delicate skin around your neck and jaw for tight, healthy, younger-looking skin. All See right. results right before your eyes. Or 100% of your money back. No questions asked. The beautiful women in my house love this product. Order now. And the classic GenuCell for bags and puffiness is free with your order. And to start seeing results in 12 hours or less, GenuCell Immediate Effects is also yours. Free. Gratis. No double chin. No turkey necks. No sagging jawline because no one needs to know your age. Go to GenuCell.com. That's G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com and enter Dan25 at checkout. Get your two free gifts and free express shipping. Go to GenuCell.com. GenuCell.com. Enter Dan25 at checkout. That's GenuCell.com. Go check it out. All right, let's go. Nice. Right. I almost got it. Almost there. Okay. Mm -hmm. First story, of course, is debate the, the debate disaster night two. The Democrats have completely gone off the le – they're like lemmings. You know, one gets a stupid poll. Let's get free health care. And then they all follow them off uh. the cliff. This was a bigger disaster than night one. I'm here to give it to you in about 20 minutes or less what you may have missed and give you the lowlights of it because there were no highlights. Again, I could give you a bunch of winners and losers, but the reality is they were all losers. There were no winning moments last night from the yeah. Republican perspective. Now, having said that, let me give you the biggest disasters of the night. Disaster number one. Bernie Sanders has asked a very simple question, a question that has never resonated positively in the history of American politics. He's asked a very simple question about, will your health care plan raise middle class America's taxes? Now, Joe, the question about, do you, know, do you want to raise taxes on the rich? I don't buy it. Yeah. But let's be honest, a lot of liberal Democrats and Democrats are like, well, that's not us. Screw the rich people. Let's raise their taxes. That's their, right. not my line, but that's mm -hmm. theirs. The not question money. about – right. I know it's not yours either because you yeah. actually understand basic economics. That's why. Yeah. So does Paula. But the idea yeah. – I think we can both agree, Joe. You become kind of a political analyst after 30 years of political talk radio. Have you yeah, – and I'm asking – I mean this seriously. I'm not trying to put yeah. you on the spot. It's not a joke. When you okay. were doing talk radio in the mornings at WCBM – for, gosh, decades, do you ever remember a politician, Democrat or Republican, serious question, who came in and yeah. said, I want to raise middle class, working class people's taxes too? Do you ever remember that? 
I don't th- it might have been one issue in 20 years where somebody said they were going to raise a little bit of taxes. But other than that, it's a very, very unpopular thing to right. do. So we can yeah. both agree that in your 20 year plus sample size, yeah. it is only idiots yeah. go on the air and say that kind of stuff. Well, That's Bernie correct. Sanders, yeah. we're talking about there idiots. So here's Bernie yeah. Sanders we're last night asked about, about re- he always he never <laughs> fails to disappoint. Here's Bernie. Check this out. Will you raise taxes for the middle class in the Sanders administration? People who have health care under Medicare for all will have no premiums, no deductibles, no co-payments, no out of exp- out of pocket expenses. Yes, they will pay more in taxes, but less in health care for what they get. People will pay more in taxes. This is, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. This is a, this goes to show you a couple of things. There's a couple of takeaways. I can you know again anybody can rant on this mm-hmm. all day, but there are legitimate takeaways from this. Takeaway number one is Bernie's the most dangerous candidate in this race. I don't mean physically dangerous. I mean dangerous in the fact that he is an actual believer, Joe. No mm-hmm. focus group of working class Americans that's supposed to give you a decent picture of how the country feels. Remember, it's a national race for the presidency. For the liberals that don't know this, yeah. it's not a local race, right? No focus group of rational people will tell you raising middle class taxes is a winner. Folks, you may say, well, why is Bernie saying it then? Because for as much as I think this guy is nuts on his policies, I mean nuts, like unstable on his policies. Folks, he's not, he's a believer in these policies. He's still a hypocrite. He's a limousine liberal. I tweeted out a picture yesterday of him sitting up in first class on a first class. Why would you fly first class? You're a socialist, right? Everybody gets the, the same gras. thing. <laughs> right, the foie gras. He's a foie gras eater. That's what he is. Everybody loves that. I get a lot of emails about that. Bernie's still a hypocrite, but he's a hypocrite who's a believer in his actual policies. I do not believe that. For Well, maybe with the Blasio too. But the other candidates on the stage, I believe, are just liars. I don't believe mm-hmm. they really believe higher taxes work. Any, They just want power, okay? I just want to be clear. Bernie's a believer. That's takeaway number one. Takeaway number two... Um, He really doesn't care about the ramifications down the line. He has now stood up twice, and I'll get to this later. One, for canceling your free market health care plan you have now that your your union or whatever your employer gave you that you like. And secondly, he wants to raise your taxes. Um, I will be stunned. I'm out of the predictions game, but I have to tell you that I will be genuinely astonished if he wins the nomination. I cannot Hmm. believe more than, say, 30, 40 percent of the of the Democrat Party, and that's even being generous, buys any of this stuff he's saying. Uh, by the way, he also leaves out the rest. He's like, you will get health care. There will be no yeah. deductibles and premiums. Folks, that's because your health care is going to be rationed, okay? There is no money fairy and there's no health care fairy. If, if I could get one economics 101 point home to my audience that you can take, and or I got a call from my brother the other day. He wanted to make a point to some lady in his job who was throwing some socialist nonsense at him. So I get a lot of questions. How do I argue this? How do I argue that? (laughs) Folks, I can tell you. I do. I get it all the time. Yeah. If I could give you one nugget, one takeaway to argue and debate with your liberal friends about anything that involves economics, healthcare economics, whatever it may be, the price of college education, it is this. All resources in society are scarce. All of them. Water, clean water, food. It's all, everything's scarce. Everything, a doctor's time, scarce me doesn't mean non-existent. It means it's 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 not unlimited. It's scarce. Those mm-hmm. resources have to be allocated. That's the fundamental component of economics, right? How do people make decisions to allocate scarce resources? Food, water, a doctor's time, computers, iPhones, supplements, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. How do we allocate those scarce resources? Ladies and gentlemen, there are only two ways and only two. There is no third way. Those ways are to price those resources, i.e. capitalism and free markets, or to ration them, i.e. socialism, government control of the means of production. There is no other way. I say that because if you want to know at at, at a high level, not at the granular level, at a high ideological level, how to argue with your leftist friends about government health care. Ask them about the third, what third way are you suggesting? If you're suggesting health care via government paying for it, 
through your tax money, you're suggesting a rationing system because the pricing system's irrelevant. A pricing system only works when you have a buyer and a seller that agree on the price. When the government gets in the middle and destroys the pricing mechanism by setting it, you inevitably roll into rationing like you have overseas right now in Europe and elsewhere in single payer systems. It's as simple as that. You can ration it or price it. Bernie does not want to acknowledge it. You will pay lower premiums. Yeah, because the pricing mechanism, you're suggesting throwing it out the window, which means you have to ration it. Delaney said it yesterday, John Delaney, former Republican congressman from Maryland, who I ran against, when he said he had asked all these hospitals in a survey he went to, hey, if you get government uh -huh. prices for your health care, what's going to happen? He's like, we're going to go out of business. Well, why? Right. Because the government prices aren't enough to cover their costs. So they're going to go out of business, which means your health care will be rationed because there won't be enough beds in hospitals to support your health care needs. Folks, I don't mean to spend a lot of time on that. I actually spent about eight minutes more than I planned on. But this is critical because other people on the stage believe this too, that government intervening in the price mechanism and basically destroying it is going to somehow not lead to rationing. Like there's a third way. There is no third way. There is no money fairy. There is no healthcare fairy. You can price it or you can ration it. It is as simple as that. The world is full of difficult choices. Everybody needs to put their big boy pants on and accept that. Well, the pricing match is going to price people out. Folks, that's not the way any of this works. Any of this. Some of the poorest people in America have assets some of the richest people in some uh, third world countries don't have. That's because we have a price system that has enabled people, even at the lower end of the income scale, to buy cellular phones, to buy computers, to have televisions. I'm not suggesting they're, they're, you know, they're living the high life. I'm simply suggesting to you that suggesting a pricing system is going to price people out of a market defies hundreds of years of free market action, not thought. It's ridiculous. Okay, moving on. So the worst moment of the night. And again, trying to view this from a democratic lens, which is tough because y y you do, you have to dump like 10, 20, 30 IQ points to do this because the debate was so ridiculous. Free stuff, the money fairy. Uh, I don't oh. think there's any question that of all the losers, ranking the losers of the night, um, Joe Biden, former vice president, just, oh, oh man, you saw it. I mean, he just got, oh. he looked so oh. overwhelmed on that stage. I got to tell you, I almost, no, nah, I didn't really hurt. feel bad for him. I'm sorry. I, I mean, I, 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 for a second, I was like, oh, I was like cringeworthy moments. Kamala Harris, a Democrat senator uh, from California, decided yesterday to go there. And uh, when I say go there, I mean use the identity politics bludgeon. Folks, I'm using this cut because a common thread on my show, which Joe and I have repeatedly covered over and over, is that the problem with identity politics, basing your policy prescriptions and your political ideology around race, gender, country of origin, religion, and mm -hmm. attacks on that, and other, basically the you're a racist approach. You know, you don't have okay. anything on the policy front to argue with a conservative about. So what do liberals always do? Well, you guys are racist. Every, you're a racist. Had tip the to, uh, Tom Moore, God rest his soul. That's all they have. Now, the problem with the identity politics approach, as again, I've discussed here repeatedly, is by its nature, it's inherently cannibalistic. It will eventually eat its own. Why is that? For a couple of reasons. And when I play this clip, you'll see exactly what I mean. Number one, it's worked for them in the past, folks. Listen, it's an awful, horrible, morally and ethically unforgivable thing to do to accuse someone of racism, xenophobia, or misogyny based on nothing more than the fact that you want to win a political debate and that the person you're accusing of that is not guilty of that at all. I mean, think about that. Is there anything worse to call someone, maybe a pedophile, but gosh, to call someone a racist in America today is life-changing. It's over. You could lose your job, your career. I'm talking about people who are not. I mean, listen, if you, sometimes uh -huh. you get people who are idiots and you got to call them out. That's the way it works and you deserve it. But that's not what the left does. 99.9% .9 of the people the liberals do this to are not, in fact, don't have a racist bone in their body. But I've warned you. So number one, it works. It has worked for them in the past. And the temptation when you seek power for people like Kamala Harris, the temptation to want to use it, Joe, is overwhelming. Oh. 
Right? Yeah, she knows. Yeah, I mean, man. this is a thing in Maryland. Uh, has it's a, too easy. Has, yeah. It's where it's run by Democrats. I worked in the uh, yeah. political system up there in Maryland when, when I was up there with Joe. This uh, Charges of racism are thrown around in Maryland all the time. Yeah. It's it's almost like yeah. it's, it's, it's their, it's, it's their go-to, right? Because it works. But secondly, the problem with this is not, the problem is it works. That is the problem. But the second problem is it's inherently cannibalistic because in your effort to seek out new victims of the patriarchy, the male white patriarchy, the very essence of liberal identity politics charges that mm. you are a victim of the male white patriarchy. That's what they go back to every time. This critical theory junk, right? It requires you to constantly seek out new victims. And sometimes those victims' interests are not aligned. And I use the example all the time of the school system in New York where socialist mayor Bill de Blasio, the worst mayor in the history of New York City, he has these schools up there, Bronx Science and others. They're elite schools. And there's a test to get in. It is an unbiased test of your aptitude and achievement, right? That's the test. Take it, pass it, get in. Simple as that. Well, what happened, Joe? Right. A lot of minority Asian students get into these schools. They, I don't know. They study hard. I have no idea. I don't know why. I haven't asked them. I haven't interviewed them. Not many black students in comparison, in, in, uh, excuse me, in contrast to the numbers that the Asian students that get in, percentages get in. It's a test. So what happened? De Blasio said, well, we're going to throw the test out and we're going to basically instill a quota system. Again, the interest groups of people the liberals want to paint as victims, the interest groups' interests do not align. The Asian parents were like, wait, I took a fair test for my child and my child took the test, got in. What's the problem? They are, there's, they're going after the administration now. It is inherently cannibalistic because as you search out new victims groups, you're assuming all of their interests align. Let me give you one more quick example. The black community in inner cities, their interests do not align with groups that support illegal immigration. And they're starting to get a lot of these, of these groups that support black inner city uh, economic development are saying, wait, how does this benefit us to flood our cities with illegal labor undercutting our wages? Ah. The answer is it doesn't. Of course yeah. it doesn't. Folks, they will eat each other alive, liberals, by pushing this agenda. Now, proving my point, Kamala Harris knows charges of racism are an effective weapon. But notice what she does here in this cut. She does the, what I call the G.I. Jane approach. People who don't want to make statements uh, don't make statements about not making statements. That's a line from that movie G.I.J. when she walks in there. She uh -huh. says, I don't want to make a statement. Well, then don't make a statement. She says at the beginning of this, I don't want to say, Joe, you're a racist, but basically you're a racist. Here's the cut. Yeah. On the issue of race, I couldn't agree more that this is an issue that is still not being talked about truthfully and honestly. I, there is not a black man I know, be he a relative, a friend, or a co-worker who has not been the subject of some form of profiling or discrimination. Growing up, my sister and I had to deal with the neighbor who told us her parents couldn't play with us because, she, because we were black. And I will say also that, that in this campaign, we've also heard, and I'm going to now direct this at Vice President Biden, um, I do not believe you are a racist. And I agree with you when you commit yourself to the importance of finding common ground. Mm -hmm. But I also believe, and it is personal, and I was actually very, it was hurtful, to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. I, uh, that one's going to sting, Joe. Joe's like, yeah. Now, <laughs> very, very clever. And I mean that in a devious way, not in some laudatory mm -hmm. way, okay? Very clever by Kamala Harris. Again, she takes the G.I. Jane approach. When you watch the movie, you'll remember that line. People who don't want to make statements don't make statements about not making statements. 
If you think Joe Biden is not a racist, why then are you lobbing charges of racism at him later? It is clear what she's insinuating, that Joe Biden's comments about working in the Senate with segregationists over this busing policy, it is clear she's calling him out for racist charges. Now, as I said, let's go back to the two rules of identity politics, the two not golden rules, but the two rules of coal, like coal you'd get at Christmas because it's an awful thing. These rules are terrible. Number one, mm -hmm. it works or has worked in the past for them. Kamala Harris wants power. Joe Biden is in her way. He's leading in the polls. They can't knock him on his record because he worked with Obama, which was, was the most liberal president in American history. The liberal base votes, follow me here, folks, so they know they're not going to be able to attack them on policy. So what do they see? They say, well, Joe, when in doubt, we got to go back to racism. Where's that Which race card? Then, Where is it? Every single Where's time, buddy. Card? Every time. I got every it. time. There you go. <laughs> every single right. time yeah, they man. go back to it. Which segues inconveniently into what I told you in the second, uh, the second coal rule of identity politics. Because this is what you're going to get, coal in your stocking every time you use it. Yeah. Eventually, it will turn back on you because it is inherently cannibalistic. You will have to eventually search out new victim classes whose interests do not align. I warned you. Now, showing you how damaging this is, in case you think I'm being hyperbolic or overestimating the effect of how awful these attacks were for Biden. They were, believe me. Are they going to knock yeah, him out man. of the front runner's post? I'm not sure the Democrat primary is so screwy now. Who knows? I mean, I thought Elizabeth Warren was done after the Charlemagne interview where he compared her to Rachel Dolezal, and that didn't turn out to happen. Um, but here is CNN. This cut's a little choppy, but they get, they, you can we can hear it. This is CNN. Uh, what, who is it? Nia Malika Henderson and Van Jones talking about how Biden who was Barack Obama's vice president, the most liberal president in American history, isn't woke enough. Woke, by the way, meaning like, you know, aware of the social, social justice warrior crowds, lingo and everything. This is really damaging stuff. I think one of the problems that Joe Biden has is he already thinks he's woke on these issues around race and around oh, gender, you right? Preach. If you think about, uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, if you think about something like Pete, I mean, you can sort of see the evolution in terms of wokeness and a lot of the younger white male politicians who have to, have to acquire this language around race and gender and, and income inequality. I in other words, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't learn the language of the social justice warrior, right? The, the, um, mm -hmm. the non-pronoun calling people they instead of he or she. If you don't, that's just one example of many. If you don't learn the language of the modern day snowflake social justice warrior, you are finished. Folks, I can't tell you how damaging this is. And uh, for those of you who, who didn't see the video, Van Jones is in the background there, like gingerly sipping a cup of, uh, of coffee going, you better preach. In other words, he knows it too. That in this increasingly snowflakey social justice warrior Democrat party, a guy like Joe Biden, an old white male, even though he worked for Barack Obama as his vice president, it doesn't matter. He's still not woke enough. You will never be liberal enough. The movement, ladies and gentlemen, is a cannibalistic movement. Don't ever, ever forget it. Now, one more on Biden, because this, this guy's the front runner. This is important. Again, to show you how damaging this was, Biden stammers through an answer. It's why I broke it up to the Kamala Harris charges of racism, even though she says he's not a racist, right? He stammers through an answer. And then about three quarters of the way through it, he still has time left. Biden actually cuts himself off in a debate. I've never seen this before because I think he realizes no. this is really awful and he just better take his toys and go home at this point. Here's his answer. 30 seconds, because I want to bring you know, other people report, into this. I supported I the ERA in. from the very beginning. I'm the guy that extended the Voting Rights Act for 25 years. We got to the place where we got 98 out of 98 votes in the United States Senate doing it. I've also argued very strongly that we, in fact, deal with the notion of denying people access to the ballot box. I agree that everybody, once they, in fact, they should, anyway, my time's up. I'm sorry. Thank you, Vice President. 
I love your, I, your sound effects after these. Ooh. <laughs> What's that movie, right? All you got to say is, ooh. That's in a movie somewhere. I know. I'll get a thousand emails. I forget. I, you know, my pop culture references are, are the worst in American history. That's all you got to say. Is, oh, it's from Rocky. From Rocky. When they spit in the bucket. Or something like that. All you oh. got to say. Yeah. Oh. That is – who cuts themselves off? Ladies and gentlemen, again, I've been run for office wow. three times. I've been in probably well over 150 debates. Seriously, I've been in a lot. I mean one campaign we probably did 30 or 40 alone uh, You know, just in the first few months. You never, ever give up the mic if you don't have to. You always try to get no. a few extra seconds, right, Joe? You've seen these things. You yeah, get a man. minute extra. You get a minute, you take a minute 10. You get a minute 30, you take a minute 45. You never cut yourself off. Folks, the takeaway from this, again, Biden is in a world of trouble. Identity politics was absolutely going to ruin the left. It is eating the party alive right now. A lot of sane, rational Democrats, there are a lot out there, are starting to realize it too. I saw a couple tweets last night. Democrats watching this debate. You know, I'm assuming people are telling the truth because they're blue check mark folks I trust. But people who are watching debates with Democrats are like, I can't believe this is my party. They're in a lot of trouble, folks. Okay, I got more coming up, including Bernie Sanders. Wait, just stay tuned. You, this one is just, this is peak. We've reached peak Bernie, oh, which is yeah. hard to believe. Yeah, it gets better. All right, today's show also brought to you by our buddies at Calm and Comfort. This is the best weighted blanket out there. The only problem I have with Calm and Comfort is when I go to a hotel and sleep, I don't have my Calm and Comfort blanket, which really stinks because every night I, I try to fall asleep, there are days that are really anxious and stress-inducing. I need the Calm and Comfort blanket. It's by Sharper Image. It's the luxurious weighted blanket that helps you relax. You can fall asleep and stay asleep naturally. No need to suffer through another sleepless night. I tried Calm and Comfort by Sharper Image. I love it. The cool blanket which is important down here in Florida when it gets hot. The cool blanket by Calm and Comfort combines the comfort of a weighted blanket with cooling viscous fiber technology to give you the best sleep of your life. It applies an even amount of pressure over your body for a deep touch pressure stimulation while keeping you cool and comfortable. Ladies and gentlemen, this works. Look it up online. These weighted blankets are like magic. They really, really work. They're excellent. The Cool Blanket by Calm and Comfort features specially designed viscose fibers derived from bamboo. These special cooling fibers draw moisture away from the body, promote airflow to help regulate your overall temperatures. Designed to give you calm and cool, weighted comfort every single night year round. Like I said, the only problem is I can't take it with me on the road. I'm going to have to ship one off to the hotel. When under the blanket, you have experienced that feeling of being hugged which is as soothing for adults as it is for children. It's just biological impulse there. Take relaxation to the next level. Choose a weight recommended for like 7 to 12% of your body weight. They have 15, 20, 25 pound blankets. They, they'll ship right to you. Kid sizes are available too. Reduce your stress and anxiety at night, folks. Uh, the Calm and Comfort Weighted Blanket, excuse me, uh, comes with a 90-day money-back, anxiety-free, stress-free, best sleep, uh, sleep of your life guarantee from Sharp Rooms. You won't need it. You're going to love it. Right now, just for our listeners... Go to calmandcomfortblanket.com. Use promo code DAN at checkout and you'll get an astonishing 15% off the displayed price. You will love this product. Again, that's calmandcomfortblanket.com. Use promo code DAN for 15% off. Claim your special discount today. Calmandcomfortblanket.com. Promo code DAN. You are going to love, love, love this product. All right, getting back to it. As if Bernie couldn't get any worse, and I told you the dangers of Bernie Sanders is Bernie's an actual believer. He is a believer that this stuff works. He was asked about his health care policy last night and his government takeover of the health care system, his rationing system, and his canceling of Medicare and private health care. And he asked to double down. He said, well, you know, will this pay for basically what will it pay for? Will it pay for abortions and stuff too? He delves off into this arena. This is just a lightning rod for Bernie Sanders. But ladies and gentlemen, he just doesn't care. More evidence. Bernie Sanders is a believer. Play the cut. Medicare for all guarantees every woman in this country the right to have an abortion if she wants it. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Folks, now, not only are your taxes going to double to pay for Bernie Sanders' pie-in-the-sky, government-controlled, rationed health care system, but now, if you happen to be a pro-life uh, advocate like me who supports life, life in the womb, life outside the womb, uh, you will now finance the destruction of life in the womb. 
by money confiscated you, by, by you under, under the threat of force, by the way, by a government Bernie Sanders wants to head. Folks, again, evidence that Bernie Sanders is not even remotely interested in the mainstream of American politics. Bernie Sanders is a far left radical who is an absolute believer. He is without question the most dangerous candidate on that stage. Like I said, de Blasio is a believer too, but he's just a buffoon. Did you see de Blasio? By the way, I don't know if you saw the story, Joe. This is how much of an idiot de Blasio is. I live in Florida. South Florida, where I live, has a heavy Cuban population. People who I'm mm -hmm. friends with, by the way. My neighbor is one sure. of them. I mean, literally my neighbor. And then a guy I deal with once a week, a friend of mine, who I'm not going to say who. These people lived under socialist Cuban tyranny. They've directly they experienced the horror. Oh, they know, all right. The horrors mm -hmm. of socialism. This socialist idiot, de Blasio, goes and gives a speech in Miami and unbelievably quotes Che Guevara. Remember Che Guevara of La Pared, the wall? Yeah, murderous Che Guevara, the wall, who used to put Cubans up against the wall and they would kill them? The Miami population was like, did you just quote Che Guevara? He had to issue this extensive apology on Twitter. But again, goes to show you how these two, Sanders and de Blasio, are, are morons. They actually believe in this stuff. But de Blasio's got no chance because he's such a goof. He's got no shot. Okay, uh, moving on. Again, this far left radical lurch, people were last night, even a lot of moderate Democrats were, were just blown away by what has happened to the once great party of John F. Kennedy. It is now completely deteriorated into anti-religious, anti-free market animus. Here is the, you know, the, the go-to guy of the day, a South Bend mayor, Pete Buttigieg, for some bizarre reason, trying to invoke an attack on Christians as a positive. This is bizarre. Play the cut. The Republican Party likes to cloak itself in the language of religion. Now, our party doesn't talk about that as much, largely for a very good reason, which was we are committed to the separation of church and state, and we stand for people of any religion and people of no religion. But we should call out hypocrisy when we see it. And for a party that associates itself with Christianity, to say that it is okay to suggest that God would smile on the division of families at the hands of federal agents, that God would condone putting children in cages, has lost all claim to ever use religious language again. Vice President. Okay, nobody's saying that. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. I, I, Joe, what? did, did I, did you, what the I, hell you know, is he talking about? You follow the news like I do, looking for cuts. I don't uh, recall. I don't know who he's talking about suggesting I, that. No. Jesus Christ or God uh, would, 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 would I don't I don't recall that quote. I don't know who he's talking about. Um, nobody's saying that. We're not saying that children that have to be detained because they were separated from people who brought them into the country in a trafficking. What do you Mayor Pete? This just this guy's such a knucklehead, it's disappointing. What is your suggestion? This goes to show you this. You know, render unto Caesar what is Caesar, render unto God what is God's. That's always been the Christian worldview here. There are some government policies that are not good. They're just less bad. What is your suggestion to do with, what do you want to do with kids who are transported illegally by no choice of the United States, by the choice of the migrant? You bring a child here illegally in violation of our law. You are not the child's parent. We don't know who you are. You could be a child trafficker. In many cases, they are. The child then has to be separated from you because we're not going to leave you with a child trafficker. Does this, is this, Buttigieg not get that? Is this guy that dumb? What would you like us to do? We have to put the children in some kind of facility. You want us to leave them on the street? Take care, kids. See you later. And then as we try to get the kids supplies and toothbrushes and soap and Donald Trump asks for funding... And we need beds. What do people like Buttigieg and the left do? They protest that too. And then he says, and you cloak it in Christianity and religion. We're not cloaking anything. We're suggesting a sane, rational policy at the border is the humanitarian approach because illegality fosters child trafficking and, that, and housing circumstances nobody would be comfortable with for children who we have no, what, what's your solution, dude? He doesn't have one. And he, he talks about re religious folks like we're somehow hypocrites. How are we hypocrites? Yeah. 
We've never changed. We believe in life because we believe in life. We believe every life is a creation of God, our, 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 my Savior. You don't have to believe in that. I believe in freedom of religion. Mm. Render unto Caesar Pious. applies to me too. I don't, I'm not forcing you to be a Christian. You don't have to be a Christian to listen to the show. It's my personal belief. I do what I can to advocate for the principles of, of Jesus Christ, and it matters to me. But I don't believe my government should have to hammer you over the head with that. And that's not in the Bible either. I don't know what this guy's talking about. The government are the ones punishing people for their beliefs, not Christians. But again, Buttigieg, just what he thinks he's getting out of that, I have absolutely no idea. Attacking the evangelical and Christian crowd is just candidly bizarre and is really, really stupid politics. All right. Yesterday, I told you a landmine was laid big time in yeah. debate number one, asking mm -hmm. the Democrat candidates on stage, will you cancel Americans' free market health care plans they have now? Unbelievably, knucklehead, well, de Blasio is a knucklehead. That's not unbelievable. But unbelievably, Elizabeth Warren yesterday raised her hand and said yes. The question came up again. I'm going to get to that in a second. Last sponsor of the day, because it's gonna, I'm, I'm telling you, this is just going to blow up in spectacular fashion for the left. Finally, today's show brought to you by buddies at U.S. Law Shield. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a concealed carry permit holder and you carry a firearm, do not carry naked. Without U.S. Law Shield, you are doing yourself a big disservice. There are so many pitfalls out there for legal firearm owners. God forbid you were involved in a self-defense incident. You have no idea. I have seen case upon case of this of federal agents and cop friends of mine involved in these incidents who were sued and other things later and were left, some of them were left, had to go out and get these, uh, find these services later. U.S. Law Shield is a pretty, it's a pretty neat company because they not only defend firearm owners who are forced to use their firearms to protect themselves or their loved ones, they provide educational tools and training to empower you before these incidents happen as a law-abiding firearm owner. It's worth every penny. They created a special website for my listeners, uslawshield.com slash Dan, where you can get their five defender reports worth $100 absolutely free. This is must-read material. Coming from a law enforcement background, I can tell you this information is vital and necessary. Forget politics for a second, folks. This is about being a responsible firearm owner. You will be amazed at the number of legal potholes and scenarios you didn't think of, which is why these defender reports are so valuable now, not after the fact. This is a limited time offer. Get your free reports today at $100 value at uslawshield.com slash Dan. Again, that's uslawshield.com slash Dan. Go check it out today. Don't carry naked. uslawshield.com slash Dan. Okay. So again, they asked the question, who's going to cancel the insurance of tens of millions of Americans who actually enjoy their health insurance policies now? <laughs> the landmine was set. NBC dropped it. And here are the, here's the answer to last night's question. Let's talk about health care, and this is going to be a show of hands question. We asked a question about health care last night that spurred a lot of discussion, as you know. We're going to do it again now. Many people watching at home have health insurance of their employer. Who here would abolish their health insurance in favor of a government-run plan? Yeah. All right. Sorry about the hiccup. That's not on producer Joe. That's yeah. on me. That's the one I sent over. I was rushing to get all these cuts over this morning to yeah. give you the best show out there. Um, I I I I can't I can't believe it. Who raised their hands? Of course, if, if you didn't see it, it was <laughs> Kamala Harris and Bernie Sanders. Now again, Bernie's not surprising because Bernie's a believer. No. but Kamala Harris is not. She is. She has flip-flop flipped on this. Initially, she gave an interview right after she announced. I, um, forgive me. I think it was on CNN. I, I play it, but I, I don't know. If, I want to just sum it up quickly. And she was asked, do you want to cancel private insurance? She said yes. And then a day later, she backtracked that. Now she's back again to wanting to cancel private insurance. Ladies and gentlemen, these ads write themselves. Think about this. Hat tip to Tucker Carlson who made this point last night on his uh, show on, on, on Fox, which I'll be on tonight for my news explosion at the end before I fill in for Hannity. So make sure you watch both shows. Um, Tucker Carlson said last night, think about this, Joe. 
union workers in the United States are largely Democrat, largely, maybe, I don't know, 60% yeah. or so. Um, you're seeing a lot yeah. transfer over onto the Trump train now. Uh, but having said that, it's not unreasonable to say the majority of union workers in America probably vote Democrat. How do you feel, yeah. and I'm directing this to you, if you are a worker in the IBEW, uh, whatever local 25 in Long Island, whatever it may be, I only bring up the electrician's union or a plumber's union somewhere, your union has yeah. lobbied for a specific health care benefits package that you like. The satisfaction in unions with their health care plans is typically pretty high. Data matters, folks, right? You've lobbied for these benefits for you, your kids, your family. You work for a living. Listen, I always said I'm not anti-union. I'm just anti-monopolies. You, you should be free to join a union. I just think you should be forced to be. But I'm absolutely, anyone who tells you you're anti, I'm anti-union, is not, it's, it's absolute nonsense. You are lying. That is absolutely not true. I grew up in a union household. My brother's a union worker now. He likes it. He'd probably join again tomorrow. Great. Good for you. That's terrific. It's good to have someone lobbying for your interests. How do you feel yeah. if you're an IBW worker, International Bureau of Electrical Workers, a Local 3 in New York City, right? And your union is lobbied for this terrific package of benefits. Finally, you're working, you're busting your butt every day. You're in work at six o'clock, whatever it may be in the morning. You're laying wire, you're cutting wire, you're bending cable, bending whatever it may be. And all of a sudden you find out that plan your union lobbied for is now canceled when Bernie Sanders is the president and Kamala Harris and Elizabeth Warren all raising their right hands. You want to cancel private church? I want to cancel it. De Blasio? I I'm not kidding. I'm asking you a serious question. How does that make you feel? That these benefits oh, no. you lobbied for have now thrown you yeah. into a pool with 330 million Americans, some of which who haven't lobbied for those benefits. Now you're on a government rationed waiting line. Meanwhile, you had a great doctor. Your kids had good dental, eye coverage. You had good cancer care. God forbid you're sick or someone in your family household. You're, all of that's canceled now. Folks, again, how is this an electoral winner in the general election? It's, it's so dumb that the, the candidates on stage who I think have a better strategic sense of the long game rather than the short game. Did you notice there was only two of them who raised their hand? There were 10 yes. candidates on stage. Biden didn't raise his hand. No one else. Who else was up there? You had Bennett, the senator from Colorado. You even had that author who gave that bizarre closing statement about like, we're going to fix the world with love. Marianne Williams, that was crazy. By the way, she put me on her email list somehow. I had to spam that thing. Like, I don't want to be on your email list. And, uh, total side note there. But these other candidates on stage get it. This is a loser, a total loser. And I only highlight unions not to be because I, you know, we have, uh, we're, we're going to have a free market healthcare plan too. We may, I don't even know what we have anymore, but I don't want my plan canceled either. I single out unions because they donate to Democrats, largely. I'm just asking you yeah. to understand there's a ramification to your decision. That ramification is what you lobbied for is going to be thrown in the garbage. Okay, this is unquestionably the where I saved it for the end. This is the worst moment of the night. I, I, I was really floored when I saw this. I, I hope I'm not even, I'm not being hyperbolic when I say that. And I hope I'm not teasing it too much. The question was asked by the NBC moderators about offering health care, free taxpayer, U.S. taxpayer funded, your money, health care to people in the country illegally, meaning basically the entire globe now has a billions of people will now be able to stake claim to health care in the United States. Think about what they're saying, because I don't want you to be in any way misled about what this question means, because we do facts and data here, unlike the Democrats. If you are going to offer health care for illegal immigrants, people who have no legal right to be in the country, you have essentially obligated U.S. taxpayers to pay for the health care of the entire globe as long as they can get into the United States legally or illegally. Please to correct me, email me if I have in any way analyzed that situation the wrong way. If your legal status in the country is entirely irrelevant, just get here and you will get our taxpayer funds to pay for your health care. How have you not staked the claim for the entire globe to get health care for free in the United States? The question is asked, there are 10 people on the stage, will you give health care to illegal immigrants? I thought to myself, no way 
you're going to get more than two, three people raise their hand. I was absolutely wrong. Play the cut. Raise your hand if, gover if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, okay. have note, every single candidate on the stage raised their right hand. Every single one of them. I, this has got, this has gone nuclear. Um, at the, by the way, I have great show notes today on this at Bongino.com. A bunch of really terrific articles about this kind of stuff. And a debate coverage, I really like you to check them out, including one I hate to give links to Politico, but a Politico piece about uh, about John Roberts today, I mean the show notes too, but please check out the show notes today at Bongino.com. Folks, they are getting filleted over this today. Um, I can't even tell you how bad this is going to be. So let's sum up how awful yesterday was. As Milton Friedman, one of my heroes, God rest his soul, has always said, you cannot have open borders and a welfare state because the entire world can stake a claim to U.S. taxpayer benefits. We now know that is the official stance of multiple candidates running for the presidency in the United States. Julian Castro advocated on night one to wipe clean our borders, to essentially decriminalize crossing the border illegally. It happened. You can check the tape yourself. Of course, he changed his prior position, as we stated on yesterday's show, but that doesn't matter. They're all flip-floppers anyway. So now we are back to arguing for open borders and a welfare state, which is a mathematical impossibility and a national security nightmare. That's your Democrat Party. Secondly, we're back to advocating for the cancellation of free market insurance. Your health care plan will get canceled, a doubling of your tax dollars, and a complete meltdown of the U.S. health care economy. I'm not suggesting private insurance has all the answers. But I'm here to tell you all of your problems are being caused by government in the healthcare arena. No doubt. Big, big trouble ahead. Okay, I'm going to try to zip through a couple more stories. There was other news yesterday. Um, you know, Trump is the is just the greatest troll in the history of Twitter. He just is. <laughs> he drives the left crazy and they keep taking the bait. So he's at the G20. And he's sitting down with Vladimir Putin from Russia, which, of course, you're going to get the question from the media. Are you going to tell Putin not to meddle in the election? So listen to this audio. Uh, check this out. Here's, this is a legit question. A reporter, are you going to tell Putin not to meddle in the election? Watch the response. <laughs> <laughs> I know the audio is <laughs> tough. For those of you who missed the video, I'll just walk you through it. They're sitting next to each other about three or four feet apart. And Trump, oh. he just turns. He looks over. He goes, hey, hey, don't meddle. Don't meddle. In other words, like, you guys are such dopes. Like, this is where the policy is going to be enforced at, at, a, at a little mini bilat in a photo op, bilateral meeting where he's with Putin. This is where, this is where it's all going to happen. So you're going to tell him not to meddle? Yeah, don't meddle. That, that, that's like classic Trump. Only Trump would do that. Anything he's done, by the way, including expanding Magnitsky, uh, trying to defeat the Nord Stream 2 pipeline, taking out those Russian mercs uh, over there on the battlefield, none of that stuff matters. The liberals think the press question at this little mini bilat photo op, this is gonna, this is gonna solve it all, Joe. Don't, so he right. just trolls them, of course. You gonna tell Putin not to meddle? Yeah, yeah, don't meddle. I, again, I know the audio was a little <laughs> tough, but it's so many people talking, but it's worth your time. Listen to it anyway. Okay, uh, let's see what else we got here. You know what? Uh, let's go to this story next. It's important. You know, we've been talking about big tech tyranny and all these problems with the suppressing of, cur of conservative thought throughout these social media forums and these video companies, which is really driving a lot of conservatives crazy. But I think proving the point I'm making, folks, that we're not getting through to Google and Facebook and Twitter and others. We're not. Unbelievably, Twitter, um, Jack Dorsey who runs Twitter, announced yesterday on Twitter that they have a new policy. So just in case you think we're like making any progress against these social media companies, you're wrong. They just don't care. And I'll have some news on this hopefully next week. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you some more information. So tune in to next week's shows. I got some, some good stuff for you. Here's a story at the Daily Caller. I saw this yesterday as I was leaving the gym. Twitter's new policy now. Twitter lays the groundwork for potentially downranking some of Trump's tweets by Chris uh, White, their tech reporter. I have the article in the show notes. Please read it. It's short. It's sweet. But you need to know what they're going to do in the details of it. Uh, from the piece, they're actually pretty fascinating what they plan on doing. They plan on putting a type of warning label 
In front of verified political candidates and officials with more than 100,000 viewers, Twitter noted in a blog post, this is from the piece, users who want to view the flag content must click on a screen that says Twitter's rules against abusive behavior apply to this tweet. Algorithms will then begin deprioritizing labeled tweets, the company said. Here, folks, here's what's going to happen. Make no mistake. Again, we're not getting through to these companies at all. At all. Mm. They keep mm. doubling down on stupid. What they're going to do is... If they think a tweet is abusive, which I promise you is going to apply overwhelmingly to conservatives, you are going to get this warning label and you're going to have to click through the warning label to read the tweet. Joe, is anybody going to do that? No, they're not going to do it, which basically renders the tweet censored and irrelevant. Folks, I promise you this is a rule that is going to – a rule. I say rule because it's not really a rule. It's, it's, it's a policy. To, it's, it, what they're going to do is they're going to dr dump Trump's tweets. Now – uh, again, from a strategic perspective, Twitter is managing to alienate, along with Google and others, uh, unbelievably, the population of libertarian conservatives like me who have actually defended them. I am losing my patience, and so are even a lot of my libertarian friends with these companies. I, I, I can't, out of principle, advocate for government regular. I just can't, because the government's even worse. But it is amazing how Twitter continues to poke the bear, insistent that there will be no long-term consequences. I've seen Parler making some waves. There have been other social media companies out there. Folks, it's only a matter of time. I'm telling you, and, and to smile a little bit when I tell you this. I am absolutely sure. Again, I'm out of the predictions. It's not a prediction because I'm so sure it's going to happen. That's kind of a prediction. But I'm positive. <laughs> Paul is laughing. It is only <laughs> a matter of time, only a matter of when, not if, before these companies' market share is entirely decimated by competitors who don't do this stuff the conservatives at Twitter and other social media companies are doing. It is only a matter of time, ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, before a competitor absolutely levels these companies. All right. Um, this is important. Please don't go anywhere. Yesterday, the Supreme Court was, I didn't get a lot of time to cover it because it was breaking news in the middle of the show. If you missed yesterday's show, please watch it. I, I, I gave some commentary on them, but we had a break in. It's kind of a live to tape show. But there were some rulings yesterday. And folks, here's the big takeaway, the Supreme Court. This is very, it gives me no pleasure in telling this. We have entirely lost John Roberts. We do not stop saying we have a conservative majority on the court. It is entirely, completely, 100% inaccurate. John Roberts is the new Anthony Kennedy. He is a swing vote who leans left. He is not a conservative anymore. John Roberts, the chief justice appointed by George W. Bush, is clearly on the solid liberal side of the camp on issues that matter often. He is easily intimidated, John Roberts. He must read the Washington Post or New York Times opinion columns. They know this. They write columns before a prominent uh, uh, case is going to be heard. They know they'll scare him by threatening him and uh, his reputation. And John Roberts caves. It is days like today where you should really be thankful for people like Alito, Thomas, and Gorsuch. Because they're three rock stars. Thomas is the, Clarence Thomas has just been, I don't know what we're going to do without him. He's a rock on every single case. A rock. Roberts is the worst. I saw a tweet by Matt Schlapp from the American Conservative Union. We should impeach Roberts. I got to tell you, I, there's a part of me going, that's not a bad idea. He is awful. Awful. What happened? Not only is he awful, he's inconsistent. Now, Roberts, you know, saved Obamacare. John Roberts voted for the Obama administration to yeah. save Obamacare in the worst decision in Supreme Courts in the Supreme Court's modern uh, Obama Trump era history. The worst decision, no question about it. But yesterday, he's not even ideologically consistent. Even Politico is starting to understand the damage this guy's do. Politico, of all places, to the conservative movement. This is the article I have in the show notes by Josh Gerstein. Read it. I, I'm not a big fan of Politico, but it's worth your time. They actually mentioned me in the piece. That's not why I put it up there, but it's a good piece. Title, Conservatives Blast Roberts as a Turncoat. He is. They cite some of my tweets in the piece. He's terrified of the liberal op-ed pages. 
Now, the Wall Street Journal did an amazing analysis of how Roberts, not only is he a turncoat, but he's not even ideologically consistent. He can't even get his own story straight. This is a little complicated, but it's definitely worth your time. The Wall Street Journal piece. This is a good one. Uh, they point out how uh, the piece is called The Contradictions of John Roberts by their editorial board. I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to explain it to you. Please don't go anywhere. This is important. Quote, it's hard to reconcile Chief Justice Roberts' opinion on the citizenship question which is with his hour decision earlier this week. On one hand, he wants to defer to regulators on matter of legal, matters of legal interpretation that are purview of the courts. But on the other hand, he wants to micromanage the motives of agencies when there is no cause for judicial review. What happened? What does that mean? I know that's a little complicated. The day prior, Roberts voted with the liberals on this hour, A-U-E-R case, which basically says that they will defer to executive agencies to interpret their own rules. In other words, folks, very simply, bureaucrats under the executive branch, if there's a rule that's written, Joe, that's slightly, that's not clear and has some ability to wiggle mm -hmm. in it, that we mm -hmm. should defer to those executive agencies to manage that rule and basically enact it. You get what I'm saying? Does that make sense? In other words, yeah. the simplest way possible, number one, here's, here's Roberts earlier in the week. Trust the bureaucrats, right? Let the executive okay. agencies do their thing. That's Roberts earlier in the week. Yet when it came to the citizenship question on the census, where Roberts voted with the liberals again to strike down the citizenship question on the 2020 set, are you a citizen or not? A reasonable question. Amazingly, Roberts writes the majority opinion with the liberals. We've lost him. And he says the exact opposite, Joe. The exact opposite thing. Even the journal called him out. They're moderates at best. Hmm. In the citizenship question, he says, don't trust the Department of Commerce and these agencies. In other words, he says their legal reasoning for putting the citizenship question on was perfectly fine. You've got to read his opinion. He has no issue with the legality of it. He just says, ah, but the way they have explained it is no good, so we don't trust them. What? <laughs> Brother, what is it? Is it trust the bureaucrats like you said earlier in the week, or is it don't trust the bureaucrats like you said yesterday? Ladies and gentlemen, this guy is lost. There is no conservative majority on the courts, period. He is a swing vote who leans left. Now, Trump to shade him by saying, all right, we'll delay the, we'll delay the printing of the census, uh, census documents when I get you a reason, which was really a solid move. But Roberts is a lost cause. Please read the Politico piece. It is absolutely worth your time. This guy is real trouble. Forget Roberts. It's over. This guy is no conservative and no originalist. He is unquestionably leaning left, if not liberal, on the cases that really matter. All right, folks, thanks again for tuning in. I had a few more stories, but we'll get to them. Again, I have some really terrific news coming next week. I'll keep you updated on. So, um, you know, stay tuned there. Tune into next week's shows. And thank you for another great week. Please check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Bongino. I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe. It matters to me. Subscribe to the audio show on Apple Podcasts, iHeart, and SoundCloud. It's also free to do that. All of these subscriptions are free. And don't miss me on Hannity tonight. Set your DVR. If you can't watch it, I'm uh, taking a flight up in a little while. Thanks for another great week. I'll see you all on Monday. Good day, sir. All right, today's show is brought to you by our buddies at Brickhouse Nutrition. They make one of the finest nutrition supplements out there. Hey, here it is. Field of Greens. Field of Greens. Now, you'll notice that's empty. Why is that empty? Just like my bottle of foundation or other great product, I use this. This is the finest fruit and vegetable supplement out there. This is real food, Field of Greens. This is not cheap extract. This is real ground up, healthy fruits and vegetables, the key to a long, great, healthy life. Your cognitive abilities look better, feel better, perform better. Field of Greens, it's your fruit and vegetable insurance. I love it. Use the product twice a day. It tastes great. This is real, healthy, high quality fruits and vegetables. Think of it as your fruit and vegetable insurance for a long and healthy life. Go to BrickHouseNutrition.com slash Dan. Pick up a jar of Field of Greens. This is empty. I need some more because uh, we use it, me and my wife too. Field of Greens, available at BrickHouseNutrition.com slash Dan. That's BrickHouseNutrition.com slash Dan. Pick it up today. You just heard the Dan Bongino Show. You can also get Dan's podcasts on iTunes or SoundCloud and follow Dan on Twitter 24-7 at DBongino.